Here I've set up the uh, Rigol, in this case it's the MSO, but the equivalent of the DS1000Z uh, uh, for an SPI decode. You can see over here we have the decode in the upper right hand corner. Uh, the decoder is on. The clock is set to channel 1. That's this uh, yellow uh, line at the top. The MISO, that is Master In, Slave Out, is turned off. Master Out, Slave In is set to channel 2. Uh, and that's this second line in blue. And then the chip select is the is channel 3. It's not shown on this menu, but it's one further down. Uh, and so let's take a look at what we actually have here. So what we have is the clock and data. This is a start signal for an SPI bus and it's the start signal that occurs when chip select is asserted. In this case chip select is active low so it's really chip select bar if you think of it that way. And then down below is the decode in hex. You'll notice that it's uh, the, the numbers are 97, 97, 97, 97. The way this particular board works is it puts out four bytes of data all in with the same number. Then it increments that number and puts out four more. It will then uh, go into a mode of two and it'll put out two numbers and so on. I've stopped the scope. Uh, you'll see up here that the run stop is uh, is stopped and that's so that I can display just one because of course this is changing all the time and so if you don't stop the scope you're, you're constantly overriding what you're seeing and you just see gibberish on the screen. So this is basically the way that the Rigol SPI decoder works. It seems to be pretty easy to use but I'll point out something that's rather important. You may notice I'm using three channels and to properly decode an SPI bus you do need three channels. Now you also, if you're going to look at the response, in other words the MISO signal, you need four channels. So that's one reason that if you're going to do SPI decodes you really need a four channel oscilloscope and I really don't think that the decode on the signal would ever uh, be satisfactory. The reason is you'd be looking at what the master sent out then you'd be then you'd have to reconfigure everything and move a probe around on a two channel scope I'm talking about in order to look at the the response that is the MISO M-I-S-O instead of the M-O-S-I. By the time you've done that that signal is long since gone and so then you have to kind of hope you catch the response and you'll never be able to display on the scope at the same time the master's signal out and the master signal in, that is the slave's response to the master on the same scope screen. And so the bottom line of all this is, in my opinion, if you don't have at least four channels available to you, it's really kind of pointless to, to think that you're going to be able to do any serious SPI decoding. So let me stop at this point and, uh, and then show you the same thing on the analog discovery, which is in essence a 16-channel logic analyzer. We're now displaying the output uh, on a uh, personal computer of the analog discovery decoding the same signal. Now because I've stopped this at a different point the decode is slightly different and you may notice that in this case the decode is a uh, try to zoom in a little bit hex 87 once again four bytes uh, hex 87 four times in a row. The signals you're looking at here the top signal is the chip select uh, the second signal is the S clock and the bottom signal is the MOSI or master out slave in same as we were looking at on the Rigol. 
Now, at this point, it has incremented, or rather decremented, the counter by 10 hex, uh, which is in essence one bit shifted in, in hex. And that's the reason why you're seeing 87 here instead of the 97 that we saw on the other. But it's, if I had been able to stop both of them at exactly the same time, you'd have seen, seen exactly the same data on both. So I'm going to conclude bus decodes, at, uh, triggering and bus decodes at this point.